So before we begin, I'd like to connect a little bit more about UC Berkeley by the numbers. And so we are so proud of what's happening inside and outside of the classroom. And so when you're choosing Berkeley, you know, it, it's about the people, the students. I always say it's about the conversations that happen in the classroom. And I think that these numbers are a small reflection of that or, you know, a huge reflection of that. If, you know, you're looking at the prizes um, and the medals and the recognition. Um, this is just a highlight of that. And so um, I like, we just want to display this here. Um, we're really proud of, you know, being a prestigious public university um, and, you know, being an institution that's been here for over 150 years um, that has a lot of history and a lot of depth um, to it. Next slide. And so we'd like to also share UC Berkeley by their rankings. So here's a snapshot of some of the university rankings. Um, we are really proud of our distinguished faculty, our alumni, um, and, our, and that make this institution really a world-class institution. Next slide. And so on this slide, you'll see um, the College of Engineering um, in its rankings. And so each year our engineering departments are consistently ranked in the top five by the US News and World Report. Um, and so you will really gain an appreciation for the vitality of Berkeley engineering community and feel even more confident, you know, about choosing Berkeley to be the space and the place where you gain your MN, your Master of Engineering degree. And so I'll now hand it over to Bradley um, to walk us through the next slide. Yeah, thank you, Haiti. <clears throat> and so our mission here with the Fungus 2 and the MNG programs to create inclusive leaders who solve the world's problems through innovation, technology, and collaboration across boundaries. And you're gonna hear this theme and you're gonna hear this um, in all the upcoming sessions that uh, you'll be joining um, the rest of this, this week and in also future sessions with your um, department specific welcome sessions. Um, as, as a reminder, so tomorrow we have our uh, capstone team and then the day after we have our career team. And so you're gonna be hearing a lot of how we create you, you know, how do we propel you as future engineering leaders um, through your MNG experience. And leadership is a key driver of your professional success. Uh, a recent uh, survey um, from employers, recruiters, I found that the ability to work in a team, leadership and communication skills were some of the top skills that in addition to your technical skills is one of the most desired attributes that recruiters and employers are looking for. Um, and these are all the skills that you'll be gaining and growing in the MNG program with the leadership curriculum that is unique to, to our program and not many other programs have that emphasis um, on the team teaming and leadership and communication skills. And so throughout your engineering leadership journey, uh, you have a certain core set of leadership curriculum, which covers strategy, management, innovation, um, business, and that is conducted over boot camps and also during the regular semester. Uh, to complement that, you also have your technical specialization units. So these are units that you're, or courses that you're taking directly from your engineering department. So whether it be the bioengineering, nuclear engineering, um, electrical engineering, computer science, whichever department that you've been admitted to, um, those are the courses that you'll be taking for your concentration. And all of this then funnels into your capstone project. So the capstone is a huge, uh, I would say a, a landmark of the, of the MNG program uh, because you're able to apply what you're learning from your leadership communication skills um, also with your technical skills um, and applying it to a real world deliverable, real world project that you're working with other Master of Engineering students with. Um, and something that's unique about the capstone is you're able to identify ones that you're interested in and then be matched ultimately with one that, um, that you hope to work with. And so you'd be working with a faculty advisor or maybe you might be interested in one in our industry um, capstone. So all of this will be covered more um, in tomorrow's morning session. Um, but these are just some of the, if you wanted to envision your year, uh, this is what next year uh, will look like throughout your time. 
I'm going to turn over uh, to Haiti um, to talk about uh, what the schedule will look like. And right before then, I want to put out there that we forgot to mention that if you have any questions um, about the um, just any questions in general, just as you're getting onboarded or questions that about the program itself, feel free to chat the recordings and or feel free to chat your questions and we'll add this into um, we'll answer them at the end of our session. Thank you, Bradley. Um, so now we'll be talking a little bit about, you know, what the program schedule looks like for this program. And so a typical year will look like with a MENT program, we are a two semester program. Um, and we do begin with orientation um, in early August. And so you'll see the dates here in the slide, August 7th through 8th. Um, it's gonna be online and in person. And so, and then we'll follow that with the engineering leadership bootcamp, which will begin from August 9th and go through eight, August 18th. Um, and in the spring, we also have boot camp, and so those dates are January third through the twelfth. Um, and so, please save the dates; um, those are required um, as part of your onboarding and as part of, of as part of the semester and being a student in the program. And so, each semester, um, you know, as I shared, we begin with an intensive engineering leadership boot camp, and then after that, you complete some of the technical electives and um, leadership courses while also working on your capstone project in a small team. Um, and so, next slide, you'll see the fall semester here. This is what um, you know, an example of what uh, your schedule may look like for the fall. So a full-time student is considered at, at 12, um, 12 units. Um, and then in the spring, you can, next slide. And in the spring, um, another example is you'll be enrolled in 13 units with a combination of engineering courses and then your technical electives and then the capstone um, engineering units here. And so you'll see this is what a combination of both the technical and leadership courses with the capstone um, will look like for your two semesters that you're in our program. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so with that said, um, with that brief introduction, you can also find the schedule on the new admit website. Um, so if you want to take a more of a look into what the two semester course load will look like. It's available on the Fung Institute at berkeley.edu. Um, and then if you just look up new admit website, you'll be able to find this information as well. And so with that, um, just wanna highlight again, so this was our kickoff meeting, um, just to kind of get you all, kind of get the juices flowing, get to chat with each other. Um, and so for the um, kickoff meeting, and so for all the other events that we have, we have a, a capstone experience tomorrow morning, uh, 8 a.m. as well. Um, it'll be a virtual, the link to register if you haven't already registered. Um, the link to register, I'm gonna include it in, our, in the chat. And this is the link that you'll be able to uh, register for any of the, um, of the events. And so these are all the events that are coming up. And so, we have our capstone experience where you'll get to meet our um, amazing teams. So Jennifer Mangold and Claire Trias, who are gonna talk about the capstone experience. They're gonna have a capstone teams um, on their panel. And so it will be a great way to learn more about what it, the capstone entails and what differentiates um, this experience versus maybe other programs. And so these are just part of, you know, some of the topics that um, past groups have worked on. Um, and then career development team, they're going to be on Thursday of this week, also virtual. And so you'll get to meet our great advising team with Julie, Dioni, and Alicia. And so they will also be help, uh, able to cover, um, for example, some of the uh, supports that they provide. And also they're going to have a really great panel as well with alumni and current students, especially given the job search process and what it's like. Um, and so I think this might be a top of mind for many of you. And so definitely encourage you to join. Um, and then we also have the, your engineering department info session. So based on your concentration, based on your department, 
Um, those sessions will be taking place uh, in about two weeks. And so those registration links will also be online. Um, and so you can join those sessions to get department specific. So um, we've gotten some class uh, questions around technical courses or maybe uh, particular classes that you're interested in um, taking. So that would be something that would be the engineering department um, would be a great um, place to ask those specific engineering related questions. Um, <clears throat> and then the optional uh, on-campus visit day. So this is something that all the crucial information will be done virtually. Uh, but if you happen to be the area or maybe you wanna visit Berkeley to get a sense of apartments or things like that, you can go ahead and scan that QR code. We are gonna add this link. Um, it's a, to, to an Eventbrite. We are gonna add that to the admit site um, today. And so if you were to visit the new admit site later today or even just tomorrow morning, you'll also be able to um, register and indicate which um, events you'll be able to make. Um, the biggest push for this is uh, you will have a lunch with current students. Um, and there will be a campus tour and also just a little mixer with other um, College of Engineering MNG affiliates. So uh, we've invited faculty, we've invited other staff, um, other current students. And so you, it'll be a nice little mixer um, and mingler to get to know um, more folks in the community already. And so um, we can just put that out there. And then now I'm gonna turn it over to Haiti um, who can get us um, prep for our current student panel. Thank you, Bradley. Um, so I'm excited for y'all to get to hear from some of our current students um, and then ask them some questions. I think uh, the current students really hold a lot of knowledge having experienced this program themselves firsthand. Um, they are currently in their, like, their second semester. They're like a couple months from graduating. So um, it's exciting. I'm excited for y'all to get to know these folks. I've been working very closely with them th this past semester. They're amazing. Um, so I asked if um, they can come off camera and then we'll pin them so we can get um, started and we can ask them some questions. Um, but we have this morning um, Joshua Duarte, um, Sean Wang, and April Yang who are here to, um, to answer some questions and connect with y'all. So um, with that said, I ask if um, they can each take turns introducing themselves, um, their name, um, why, what did they do before coming to the MENG um, program and why they applied to Berkeley and MENG and what they're hoping to do after um, graduation. So let me give, give me one moment to. All right. Yep. We got everybody pinned um, okay. and ready to go. So um, if April can go first and introduce herself. Okay, cool. Um, so, hey guys, my name is April Yang. Um, I'm currently doing industrial engineering operations research with a concentration in fintech. So, as you can see from the screen, I come from Renmin University of China in my undergrad, and I studied management science. Um, so, throughout undergrad, I also did several internships in both technology companies and fin financial companies. So um, I applied to Berkeley at Menge. It's mainly because um, I always have this passion for technology that drives people's lives towards the better. And Berkeley is in California. It's very close to Silicon Valley. And it naturally exposed me to a lot of job opportunities here. Um, I think now here in Berkeley, um, I just have a lot of opportunities to network with the alumni and also people who are currently working in the tech companies here in Silicon Valley. So I think that's pretty cool. And I'm also very interested in the leadership courses offered by MNG because um, I do wanna save this um, future potential for me to evolve into a future engineering leader. So I think that's a very special part of MNG that has also attracted me to apply. So upon graduation, um, I'm now currently also in a job seeking process. Um, I, ho I hope to become a data scientist or a software engineer in a technology company. And yeah, that's a brief intro of myself. 
Thank you, April. Um, so now I'll hand it over to um, Sean, if Sean can introduce themselves. Hey guys, um, I'm Sean. I did my undergrad back in Taiwan um, in electrical engineering. Right now, um, I'm majoring in also electrical engineering and computer science at UC Berkeley um, with a concentration in the robotics track. So I applied to Berkeley because I wanted to take some more like advanced technical courses, which I felt like I didn't have the time to do with the rigorous course back in my undergrad. Um, another reason that I applied to Berkeley was, which was same as April, because of the leadership courses, I felt like um, I wanted to further develop my soft, soft skills. So like more in terms of presentation and also just working in the team um, in general. And upon graduation, um, I'm looking to work in the States for a few years. Um, hopefully in the Thomas driving industry. Um, and then after that, probably go back to Taiwan. I'm not really sure on that yet. Thank you so much, Sean. And so now I'm gonna hand it over to um, Joshua to introduce themselves. All right, so uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, everyone, wherever you are. Um, my name is Joshua Dorte. I'm a master of engineering student here at UC Berkeley studying mechanical engineering with a concentration in product design. Um, I did my undergrad at Texas A&M University, proud Aggie, um, did my uh, bachelor's in mechanical engineering there. Um, the reason I came to UC Berkeley was uh, revolved around entrepreneurship and big tech. Um, I wanted to be more, uh, I wanted to be able to look into those areas, um, particularly being here in the Bay Area. Uh, and so, yeah, after graduation, I, I hope to potentially go into big tech or even look into uh, particular startups or even start a startup of my own. Um, I'm letting time take its course during these uh, during these times at the moment. But um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thank you so much, Joshua. And thank you everyone for introducing, um, the panelists for introducing themselves. Um, so I have a couple questions here that they're gonna answer. And so we're gonna take turns answering these questions and then we're gonna move into, I'll open it up for students um, some of the current admin students have any questions. So um, April, if you can um, answer this question, can you um, tell us how, how would you describe the men's learning environment, um, including the navigation of like B courses, group work, the pace of courses, and access to academic support within, you know, both the faculty teaching teams and then any advisors um, here available for you that have been available for you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I think in terms of the learning environment, um, I would want to highlight the pace of the courses and also the support that we get from the teaching team. So um, I would say the pace of the courses is very adaptable because um, throughout the semester, the graduate student instructors or like the teaching assistants, they would um, post this kind of surveys and um, and adjust the pace of the entire course based on our response. And I think the professors and the GSIs are very supportive. Um, they would um, they would have office hours to answer our questions, and the GSIs gave very um, wonderful tutoring sessions that which I found to be really helpful for me when I'm doing the technical courses. And in terms of the um, group work, um, I would say um, from the learning environment, the teaching team is also give, giving us a lot of instructions, but the teammates here generally in the MNH program are very cooperative and collaborative. So um, I think basically I have very um, enjoyable group of group for experience. Um, everyone is very um, supportive and, yeah, so I think generally that's my um, experience in terms of the learning environment. Thank you, April. Um, would Sean or Joshua like to add anything in addition to that question? I think from my experience, one thing I appreciate most um, is 
is the like the accessibility and openness of the faculty and the teaching team like april mentioned i feel like they're always willing to answer the questions that i have and they're very generous with their time and offering like guidance and support whenever needed thank you sean um i have a question for you would that is that different than with your experience in undergrad in terms of mm. I feel like the major difference is between how much time the TAs or the student instructors, how much time they're willing to spend with you um, answering any questions you might have the course. I feel like in with the professor, they're always willing to answer questions, but um, the major difference is in the student instructors. Thank you, Sean. Um, and then Josh, would you, is there anything in addition that you'd like to add? Um, I think the pace of courses vary uh, from student to student uh, as far as uh, what's relatively available to you. I know last year I remember hearing some stories regarding some like machine learning courses that could take up to 20 hours of work a week or um, some other courses that are a little bit lighter, but it also depends on what you're wanting to get out of the program. Um, so you can spend a significant amount more time on those classes, but you'll get a lot more out of it. Uh, and Berkeley does a great job of offering a wide range of courses that uh, can appeal to just about any of your interests. Awesome, thank you. And then the next question, if Sean can start us, start us off, um, can you go in more in depth into why you ultimately decide to select and then just the program to attend yeah um i think i'm i think that the main or at least one of the main reasons i decided to attend um this program at uc berkeley was because of um its emphasis on the leadership courses um through which we can or the students can develop soft skills because I feel like this wasn't present in other programs. Um, and I feel like everyone here, we have a very strong technical background or engineering background. Um, and for myself, I was looking for a program that outside of deepening my technical expertise, I could develop soft skills like critical thinking, mainly presentation and communication. Um, and I feel like that's that's very important as um as Bradley mentioned in in the presentation earlier in, in today's industry um a follow-up question for you Sean How, what are ways that like the program has incorporated you know you spoke about building your communication skills how, mm -hmm. how have you been able to do that um I feel like a lot of it is during the leadership courses so um they really encourage everyone to speak up um whether that's through like case like case discussions or presentations or, or just like simple lecture settings where um yeah you just you're just encouraged to express your opinion on on each subject thank you um and then joshua could you is add to this question as well um what ultimately was your decision to attend um the ment program um, I think it was a, I would say, relatively easy choice. Um, coming out of undergrad, I had about six job offers to choose from, but I didn't feel that they matched exactly what I was truly interested in um, and passionate about. Um, and so this program allowed me to further uh, develop those interests and kind of gain a greater understanding of what it is that I was wanting to do. Um, and I mean, you guys presented on the uh, the rankings of Berkeley and I, what it's renowned for. Um, and so coming here was, a, was truly a privilege um, being able to learn from such a diverse uh, student body, um, as well as being so close to Silicon Valley and all the big tech companies and startups, whatever it is. It was a it was a fairly easy choice um, to come here instead of following something that I wasn't truly passionate about. Thank you, Joshua. And then April, if you'd like to add anything in addition to what has been shared to like what ultimately was your decision to um, yeah. maybe decide. Yeah. I think that's kind of built upon, um, given that we have this leadership courses, um, this part of our program, 
um, when I was making decisions, um, my reasoning was that um, as a engineering program, having this kind, this level of emphasis on leadership and um, communication skills, um, probably the cohort and the environment is more closely connected to each other. And we can infer that um, our connections to the alumni is also tighter and closer. So um, because after we go into the industry after graduation, I think alumni at network is very important in terms of long term career growth. So um, I think having this um, enhanced and improved ability um, to network and commu communicate with people and having this kind of closer connections with the alumni is really going to help me in terms of long-term career growth. So I think that's the um, final factor that I considered when I'm, I was making the decisions. Yeah. Thank you, April. Um, and then the next question that I have, if Joshua can start us off, um, can you tell me a little bit about how you build community with your classmates and what are some tips for getting to know classmates and working collaboratively. Yeah, um, as you all may know, the cohort for this program is uh, relatively small, standing at right around 500 students or so. Um, so it, it's, uh, you guys are all brought together at the beginning of the uh, school year through the boot camp. You're able to quickly build a, a friend group, as I would say, uh, with individuals that you're surrounded by in those classes. Um, but for me, I think my community grew uh, in particularly due to the uh, where I'm staying. So I'm currently staying at the International House here at UC Berkeley. It's comprised of primarily 75% of uh, international students, 25% US citizens. I'm one of the 25%. Um, and a lot of the students within the MH program are staying here. Uh, and it's provided me a great way to interact with them. Um, my neighbor actually is an MH student who's doing the same exact major in concentration as myself, taking the same exact courses as myself, and it's even in my capstone. And so it's uh, it's quickly, it, it's very easy to network um, when you're living with individuals, uh, but the MH program also provides numerous opportunities to get outside of your bubble and meet individuals that you normally wouldn't get to see as they may be in different uh, majors, concentrations, um, and choosing to network at those events has has proven very great and establish that sense of community for me. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Sean, um, in addition to what Joshua has shared, um, what were some other ways that you were able to build community with your classmates? Um, I felt like one of the best ways I made connections was during the summer boot camp. Um, that was before the start of the program. So I felt like me and people that I met, we were able to bond over shared experiences, like um, adjusting to grad school or grad student life here um, at UC Berkeley and also like exploring neighboring areas together. Um, and then from there, I made an effort to get to know my classmates during the technical courses um, that we took during, uh, during the semester. And I think my advice for getting to know classmates is to really to take the initiative to introduce yourself to those around you um it might be a little bit scary at first but like chances are they're also looking to make connections so yeah just just be the one to, to start the conversation i would say thank you sean and then um i want to segue into a different question for april april if you can tell us um what was your experience in technical classes versus the leadership classes? Um, I think in terms of technical classes, um, they are more technical. So um, you can expect that you will be um, studying the theoretical knowledge and it's gonna be the professor delivering the lectures and you learn from those lectures as compared with in the leadership classes, um, there's more chances for you to um, stand up and speak out about your personal opinion in terms of a particular case discussion question. So um, I think my experience with the technical classes, um, one thing that I found to be really helpful is that um, many of the technical classes, they have recordings available to you so that 
um, if you did not follow any concepts during the lectures, you can always go back. And um, my personal suggestions for uh, taking technical classes is that, um, like personally, personally, I try to attend every lecture in person because I found that to be more um, more effective for, for me in terms of studying. Yeah. So I think that's the main difference. And um, the technicals are also pretty important for you um, because as a starting point in your career journey, um, you will have to pass the technicals. Yeah. Thank you, April. Um, and then my next question and last question to one of the panelists before I open it up to anyone in any of the students here who have any questions for our panelists um, is, Sean, can you tell us a little bit about how you balanced everything? We know that this is an accelerated two semester program. So how did you balance your academic, your social life uh, while also you know, being in a capstone project throughout the year? Um, can you offer, can you tell us about your experience in finding balance? Um, I think because there's just for, from my own experience, I feel like um the the way that I balance between the things that you mentioned, um the technical courses, the leadership courses, um the capstone project, and also um adapting to to grad grad student life here at UC Berkeley is is to prioritize. So I feel like um at least for the first semester a lot of my emphasis was really to focus on my technical courses and also um do recruiting so that was that was I spent most of my time the majority of my time on these two tasks so with the other stuff um I was kind of using minimal effort um to co to 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 complete them but then I think transitioning to the second semester, which which is right now, I have more time um, for social life, to focus on the leadership courses, to develop or refine my soft skills. Um, so yeah, I guess prioritization is something that I would say helped me a lot. Awesome. And then um, Joshua, if you can quickly chime in also like how you found balance. Um, through this last year, you know, you are almost at graduation in April, May, like two months-ish? Yeah, less than two months. It's, it's coming up pretty quickly, uh, kind of scary, but also kind of exciting. But nonetheless, um, I think I was able to find balance through uh, kind of surrounding myself with the right group of people, if that makes sense. Um, a lot of the people that I am constantly interacting with uh, have helped me uh, academically and have helped me career-wise. Um, and whenever I'm around them, I'm hitting that social bubble, right? Uh, so it, whenever I'm surrounded by those people, it's I'm growing academically, I'm growing professionally, um, but I'm also able to interact with them socially. Uh, and so it's just, uh, uh, as, as Sean mentioned, prioritizing what it is that you're wanting to get out of the program, what you're wanting to focus on. Um, if you're wanting the capstone to be your largest takeaway, which it is for most individuals, um, dedicating some or allocating some of your time to that and uh, your other things as well. Um, just through prioritization, I think it's the best route. Um, but for me, it's been that prioritization and also surrounding myself with, with the right group of individuals. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joshua, Sean, and then April for sharing. I want to open it up to um, people here, like the students here, if they have any questions that they'd like to currently ask the panelists, if you can please chat those questions in the chat box and I will go through them. Um, and then the ones that we don't get to go through, you actually have the opportunity to connect with our pan with the, our current panelists and then our recruitment ambassadors, who also include Colin, who's not who couldn't join us this morning, but they have individual uh, one on one advice or like meetings as like at availability, so you can sign up to connect with them one on one, and their information to sign up is on the new admit website.
Um, so do folks have any questions at this moment that they'd like to ask either Joshua, Sean, or April? So we have a question um, here, um, which I'm not sure if it was meant specifically for the panelists, but can you, can um, April, can you share about um, how you selected your classes? Uh, yeah, so for my case, generally students in IOR are required to take um, two compulsory courses, which is um, IOR 240 optimization analytics and IOR 241 risk modeling, data analysis and simulation. So um, those two are kind of fixed. And for my case, um, I'm doing the FinTech concentration. So I'm required to take another three electives from um, a list of choices in the IOR courses. So I personally just took financial engineering systems one and two. And I took those courses and it's because um, first of all, it's within the list. And secondly, um, I'm interested in the topics that these two courses cover. Um, they covered topics in asset pricing and also algorithmic trading and also market making. So I think those topics um, are very advanced FinTech topics that I want to learn more about. And they would build, build up the knowledge base for me as I go into the career and the industry. So um, that's how I made decisions on choosing um, the courses that fills my the, um, the requirement of my program. And apart from that, um, I'm also taking courses um, in the School of Information. Um, I took a course called Backend Web Architecture, and it's mainly because um, I'm also interested in um, the backend development side of software engineering. So um, just based on my per personal interest, um, I took that course. And I think generally when you're choosing courses, um, you make sure that you fill your um, the requirements of your department and you can also um, flexibly choose courses that fits your interest. Yeah. Thank you. So we're, fine, so we're here and we can find like a balance between the requirements and the balance between like the interests that we have and want to develop and new interests that are gonna come up like while you're in the program. Um, another question that I have here for any of the, our panelists here is, can you join any like sport clubs or groups um, or do you take part in any sports associations? Um, I can, I can, I can speak to this. So, um, like we have the gym called the RFS and then I think the RFS, they host, um, sports leagues, um, which is called IM. And then if you can find like a group of students that want to play the same sport, um, as you do, then you guys can form a team and then sign up for that. And then there, there's going to be like tournaments throughout the semester that you guys can participate in. So in my, uh, for, for me, I participate in the basketball um, tournament. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> and then the next question that I have um, for uh, Josh, if you can answer this question, um, what time of day are your classes usually scheduled? Are they like throughout the day, like in the evening, the morning, or does it vary depending on the concentration? Um, I wouldn't say it depends on the concentration, um, but it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, for me, I primarily enjoy classes early in the, in, earlier in the day to allow free time in the afternoon. Um, so most of my classes are structured to be right around this time, um, ending at around two or so. Um, and I don't have classes on Fridays. So you can you really do have the opportunity to structure your schedule as you like. Um, however, some courses may have a strict time. Uh, for instance, my product development course, uh, there's only one class that has uh, availability for students. 
And so that class is at, uh, luckily, at like 8.30 to, uh, to 10 in the morning. Um, and so in, in some ways you'll have flexibility, but in some ways you may not. Um, but yeah, it just depends on what you're looking for, um, the classes that you're uh, encouraged to take and ultimately the classes that you do take. Thank you, Josh. Um, and so we have another question around the capstone. Uh, we will have a capstone session tomorrow, which will go more in depth about this, but just really briefly, um, can y'all share what capstone you're in currently? Um, what projects you are in, involved in, and that's like the, uh, as in regards to the capstone project. Yeah, I can uh, touch on my capstone first. And so I'm on the Blue Goji Omni directional treadmill. So if any of you all have been on a treadmill, just imagine a treadmill that can run, walk, you, you could walk in any direction. Um, and the main purpose for this uh, capstone is to uh, enhance rehabilitation through the use of this treadmill in virtual reality. Uh, this is one of the larger uh, capstone groups where I'm in a group of around 10 individuals or not around 10 individuals. Um, and it's it's been a great experience. I've learned a ton um, and have uh, used my product design background heavily in this as well as expanded on some specific skills dealing with um, controls and robotics, which has also been extremely interesting. Thank you, Josh. And then now, Sean? Um, for, yeah, for my capstone project, we're working on autonomous racing. So you can imagine Formula One, but without the drivers. So we have like very similar cars and we work in teams to develop these autonomous vehicles and compete against each other on the racetrack. For me personally, I'm working on 3D object detection, so detecting the other race cars um, that are on the track. Uh, overall, I feel like the Capstone Project, you can determine how much time you want to spend on it. Um, some of my teammates, they're spending a lot of time, but they also get to, um, at least for my project, they also get to go to like Vegas um, for the competitions. And I think there's another competition coming up in Italy. Um, so they might fly over there. Um, so I think it really depends on how much time you want to spend. Um, and yeah, how much time you want to spend on the, pro uh, on the capstone project. And I guess in turn, um, how much you can learn throughout the process. Thank you, Sean. And then April. Yeah, for the capstone project, um, we're working on reinforcement learning for intraday stock trading. So um, it's very straightforward. Um, our goal is to improve the investment returns in stocks. And we do it by developing a reinforcement learning um, investing agent. And uh, I think in terms of time put into the capstone, it also varies by person. And in terms of the fintech concentration, we we grew um, in Capstone just with the people within the fintech concentration cohort. So, and we also start a little bit later than the other um, Master of Engineering students. So, um, and it's more flexible because we get to choose the topics that we want to work on. Um, I think more more flexibly. So um, yeah, that's a bit about the capstone I'm working on. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so with that said, we're going to end the panel session here. And I want to really just give a thank you to Joshua, Sean, and April for joining us this early morning. Um, I, we appreciate your reflections and um, your advice. And as we sh as I shared, if you had any questions that you want, I know there were some more questions that we didn't get to, but if you have more que specific questions, um, you can send those questions to fungininstitute at berkeley.edu and uh, Bradley or myself or someone else on our team will um, get back to you as um, soon as possible. But if you also wanted to connect with any of the panelists here and um, our other recruitment ambassador, they do have availability to meet one-on-one -on -one with y'all. And you can find their information on funginstitute.berkeley.edu backslash new admit. Um, you'll find um, their schedules there where you can sign up. Next right. slide. Yeah, and just like quickly next steps, if you wanna learn more as we share the new admit website is the first um, stop where you wanna go to. 
Um, and then just as a reminder, the virtual visit events um, will begin, began today um, and we'll go through April 5th. And you can sign up um, on the new student website to gain, um, to register and then gain the um, Zoom links. And that's where you'll also find the recording. And then the optional on-campus visit day is on April 6th. And then the deadline to submit your intent um, to register your SIR to SIR is April 15th. Um, but with that said, thank you so much, everyone. All right. Thank you all, everybody, for joining and have a good rest of your day, night, afternoon, um, and hope to see you tomorrow um, at the career event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.